When you use a DeFi application, it is powered by hard-coded rules. And the idea is that these rules provide users with the ability to do powerful but predictable things with their money, like borrow, lend, trade, earn interest, and that kind of thing. In order for users to coordinate such activities and engage with their money peer-to-peer, -peer, it means they have to trust the protocol or the code to do what it's designed to do. Otherwise, it'd be pretty difficult to trust anonymous DeFi users like Pineapple Silly Pony 2345 on Uniswap to sell me some SNX for my ETH. Now, I'm sure Pineapple Silly Pony 2345 is an upstanding citizen, or can I be sure? That's the point. In DeFi, we can leverage trust minimized applications without having to know someone personally or trust them. And what minimizes the trust is removing intermediaries while providing all those involved an economic incentive to cooperate within the rules of the protocol. So let's take a look at that. For example, Pineapple Silly Pony 2345 wants to safely sell SNX for ETH. I want to safely buy SNX with my ETH. Uniswap liquidity providers want to earn trading fees for providing SNX and ETH to the liquidity pool where we trade. And Uniswap developers want a bug-free protocol that works for users so that they can grow the network and benefit from holding the Uni token. Well, that's a lot of people involved. And lastly, there's a real end goal of censorship resistance for this peer-to-peer -peer network, and it's to prevent anyone, no matter how powerful, from owning, corrupting, or blocking access to the DeFi application itself. Top-tier DeFi teams are working to ensure anyone, anywhere in the world, regardless of nationality or oppression of an authoritarian regime, can access this DeFi app as long as they have an internet connection and a compatible Ethereum wallet. And that's a real revolution worth fighting for. The key takeaway is minimizing trust, removing intermediaries, and empowering a censorship-resistant peer-to-peer application may sound like a mouthful, but in reality it's Wait, wait, you know what? It's about as hard as it sounds, and it's really quite difficult to pull off. And this is precisely why you as a user need to understand the difference between something that portrays itself to be DeFi versus what is in fact real DeFi. And living up to these characteristics and working diligently to ensure users can engage with one another in the DeFi application without ever trusting or depending on a third party, yes, the only thing you should trust is the code. There's lots to think about there. But you've been watching DeFi 101. Do be sure and check out the other videos in this series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.